from lessons that leave an impact on us even outside of school to exploring interests through classes and creating pieces of work that'll last a lifetime. Stick around for all that and more on this edition of Wildcat News. Wildcat News, I'm your host, Brooke Holzhauer. As the school year comes to an end, students reflect on their choices and lessons that they learn throughout the year. The significance of them can often change our future positively or negatively. It's a big deal and has power over teens. But with great power comes great responsibility, and teens being irresponsible with drinking and driving isn't uncommon at all. According to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia's Research Institute, 24% of fatal teen crashes involve 0.1% of alcohol. 82% of the crashes involve 0.8% of alcohol. The sad organization at Warwick Valley High School is trying to combat these situations. Students Against Destructive Decisions, or SAD, is dedicated to advocating for teens to stay safe, healthy, and make good decisions. The mock crash is always meant to be an eye-opening experience for the student body to hopefully get them to understand that drinking and driving is not safe. Um, we are hoping that students go away from this, uh, making better decisions, and hopefully deciding to figure out a different way to get home as opposed to getting behind the wheel under the influence. I think it makes it truly authentic that um, their peers are the people in the cars as well as coaches, teachers, um, it could be anybody, but especially your peers because, I mean, the statistics show it, it happens more often than you think, so it could be any of them. Using cosmetology, first responders, and SAD members, a mock car crash was made in order for students to see what would happen in a real drunk driving situation. The teens involved in SAD were very impacted by this eye-opening demonstration. Oh my gosh, it was like a whole range of emotions. Like, you know, like as we're setting up, you know, like making jokes about it, like, oh, like I'm through the windshield, like I'm like fake dead. And then, you know, like everyone's walking around, like kind of making jokes. But then like once I heard those sirens and I had like the blanket thrown over me, it was just like, I was like, oh my God, this is real. Like I started crying a little bit under the blanket and like you just, like you hear the firefighters like sawing off doors and like bending back and like, oh, like she doesn't have a pulse. Like, I think she's dead. Like this one's dead. Like we have to get this one out of the car. Like it just, I don't know, like it kind of opened my eyes to like how real it all is. Being able to drive at a young age is such a great thing. So teens need to remember to be responsible about driving because if they aren't, their lives or others could be taken at a blink of an eye. Looking at the mock crash, it teaches us valuable lessons and reminds us about how choices we make in the present can either help or hurt us. When it comes to making choices here at the high school, help is always right around the corner in order for students to feel safe and comfortable. Well, nearly every year to help students explore what they might want to do at their high school. Associate Principal Stephen Sweeney has some information to provide regarding the career fair. This is the seventh year of the career fair at Work Valley High School. We had to take a couple years off for the break for COVID, but we're back now um, doing what we do best. Head of the guidance department, Mary Fox, also has some information to give. So the career fair is um, a collaboration of a lot of people's hard work. Um, reaching out, we work with um, a few people from the village, um, employers, business people, um, real estate agents, other schools. Um, and we start about six months out with reaching out to different um, employers about their willingness to participate um, and share with them like ideas about how to engage the students um, and share that information with them so that they can learn more about careers. So the whole idea is about focusing and exposing them to jobs that they weren't even aware of that are out there for them. Professionals from a variety of career fields were on hand to speak with students. These representatives provided insight about possible career paths after graduation. What we look for in an applicant is that they are of good moral character, uh, physically fit, uh, ages 18 to 30, and just someone that has a good sense of drive, someone who is like a go-getter. The advice I would give to kids if they look to get into the fire service would be um, to go for it. The War Fire Department and any fire service is a very rewarding and humbling experience. 
Um, I joined the War Fire Department when I was 16 years of age when I was in War Valley High School. Um, I'm now Chief of the War Fire Department. Um, I have 26 years in the War Fire Department. Um, the War Fire Department and all fire services or any emergency services is very rewarding and um, it can lead you to, you know, any exciting aspect of your life. It can help you secure uh, a successful career and, um, you know, anything that you're looking for to help people, number one. And what about the students and their thoughts on the fair? One student talks about why they came in the first place and how it's helped them. I found uh, this venue through various emails and announcements I got from my teachers and I was motivated to come here because, uh, you know, for the prospect of work, for, um, you know, asking around some questions about various jobs that I may not have known I've been interested in. Uh, it has opened up some paths for me. Looking around, a lot of the jobs open seem more interesting than I originally thought they were. And it has given me some extra options in life uh, about what I want to do. Um, I think this career fair is helping me get a better understanding of the jobs as well as like a first-hand account of being in that line of work. And I think for people that are still deciding on their job and what they should be, it's definitely very helpful to hear um, just like people you can relate to talk about it. So the most important thing that I feel you need to consider when you're trying to choose a career is what you're going to be the happiest doing. Because if you're not going to enjoy what you're doing, you're going to work a lot harder, if that makes any sense. Most people wouldn't consider broadcasting a mainstream career, so it, it's not like uh, there's a dedicated path on, on how you get there. Uh, the one thing I'll tell, would suggest to people is um, as you progress through your schooling and you decide on what you want to focus on, you'll meet professors and other professionals that uh, are going to be important for your career and advancing your career down the road. So even though you may focus on broadcasting as a, a, a major in college, those people you meet along the way are also going to be people that help you down the road. You'll meet producers, directors, engineers, things like that. Uh, it's all about networking. The more you meet, the more relationships you develop, the easier your career path will be down the road. The career fair provides a unique opportunity for students to interact with adults in the job field, allowing them to better prepare for their professional lives once high school is over. The career fair definitely helps students make good decisions about their future. When we come back from this short break, we'll delve into the mind and what it has to offer for the students here at the high school. Thank you. Thank you. There were many classes. What? Welcome back to Wildcat News. There's so much that happens in the world that we just overlook. We live in a world where we are constantly rushing to go places or meet deadlines. It's easy to say stop and smell the roses, but it's tricky to act on it. Don't worry though, as we have a class that might just help you with that.
It always seems like we're following a rubric, or just simply repeating whatever our teachers do. It's this traditional method of teaching that makes a class like critical thinking even more unorthodox, really. It's a class that's largely defined by its students. Projects are almost completely open-ended, and topics can range from anything from sports to the arts. With a class that thrives off variety, each student has something different that makes a class for them. So the section we did on like world beauty practices and stuff like that, um, because uh, I think it was nice to see all the like varying worldwide perspectives um, like that part we did about the South Asian like teeth cutting thing because it, it, it went to show like it put our like American view of beauty like in a different perspective and showed how like unobjective it is like showed how little it relies on like things that can be measured objectively and how much it's subject to change based on what you value in your culture. Was the opportunity for the open dialogue that I think is not necessarily, we don't have the opportunity to do that in other classes. Um, Mr. Mita really gave us the chance to go off on our tangents and really express how we were feeling about topics that, I don't know, maybe are a little taboo or not always discussed. But with critical thinking, it's completely different than everything else. We can spend as much time or as little time on any subject as we want. And it's not about learning. It's more about thinking and critiquing and sharing our ideas. And like just the open dialogue was so nice. Like the ability to just like sit in a circle and talk about our ideas and play off of each other. And like hearing what other people have to say is always really important and like opening up your mind. And it was just a really great class and I'm really happy I took it. We had a huge conversation about what is art and it took about like us two weeks to figure out what it was. I would either say it's either that or when we had the conversation about why do we go to college? Because we had a huge conversation about why do people like follow other people going to college? Because it seems safe, like it's a good career path to go down, but you know, you never know. Critical thinking, it helped me put a lot of my life into perspective. I learned a lot of really valuable lessons of how to just think about your own thoughts and evaluate yourself and kind of just take information all around you and applying it to your just day-to-day -day life and that's helped me in so many different ways in just finding what I want to do with it and finding colleges and just exploring what I really like will find passionate and how I want to take my life. Yeah, I love it. I think it's like a nice break from traditional learning. It's not just like sit and listen to a teacher. Yes. It's like more of a conversation. Like even our desks, they're pointed towards each other and not towards the front of a classroom, which I think is really great. I mean, because um, it's like we're talking with each other. It's not Mr. Mita like lecturing us. We're just, we're creating the conversation. Right, it feels like we're an active part of yeah. learning. So if you're becoming a senior, definitely try this class out. I can promise you, you'll walk out of it seeing the world through new eyes. This is Matt Doherty with WBTV, signing out. Critical thinking is taught by Mr. Mita, who has an enormous passion for the class that he introduced. It's for half a year, but in that short span of time, you'll undergo a massive change in your way of thinking. While being in school, students learn about different types of writing and ways to express themselves, but there is one certain class that puts those skills into perspective. The students of journalism produce about five copies of the survey every year, but the work behind it may surprise you. Here in journalism, you may think of us as just a group of writers, but there are also multiple other steps to getting a magazine together. Uh, being an editor in journalism is really good. You learn a lot about reading and you, know, you get better at writing. Um, you read a lot of sports articles and edit a lot of articles about the school and political events and pretty much everything going on in the world. I'm a J2 editor in journalism and when it comes to making a page, you have to find the right picture but you have to make sure that it's high res so it doesn't look like uh, pixelated and then you have to, you want to use a different font so it's not the boring regular font and then design. With all this work that comes with the class, why would anyone want to join? 
I joined journalism because I love to write and I knew that the teacher for this class was Ms. Taylor and I had Ms. Taylor for English last year and I really enjoyed having her as my teacher so I wanted to have her again. So I joined journalism for that reason and also for the reason that you get to pick like the topic of your articles so you can be creative with what you write about. And yeah, it's also a really fun class. So I joined journalism because freshman year English, we had Miss Taylor and me and my friends loved it. I loved her class so much, had so much fun that when we heard about journalism, we knew that we had to take it. Um, and I'm really happy that I did. My friends told me to join it and then I wanted to have an easy senior year. So I was like, you know what, I'll join it. Sounds like fun. Yeah, I'll definitely do this class again next year because I also know it benefits me like with my credits and going towards like my overall grades. So yeah, I'll definitely be taking this class my junior year. I originally joined just to hang out with friends and to have more time with more classes with Miss Taylor. But I actually really loved the process of writing an article and getting published in the newspaper. And then eventually as an editor, I was able to design the newspaper too, which, uh, which was a really great experience. Yeah, it was fun, yeah. I enjoyed it, I had a good time. Learned a lot, you know. Although making the survey might seem like a lengthy process, it's more than worth it to the students who see it as a creative outlet Students are able to choose what they write about, and it gives them a voice as well. If you have any questions about joining journalism next year, come to room 153 and ask Ms. Taylor about it. Here in journalism, you may just think of the class as a regular group of high school students, but these students are writers who can put together a magazine and other pieces of work. Don't go away. When we come back, we will explore in inventive ideas that the students here at the high school have to offer. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Wildcat News. Everyone wants to leave a mark on the world, whether you do that by playing music, writing a story, or maybe even painting a portrait. But this class takes that statement to a whole new level with a little help from technology. There were many classes that I took here in the high school, teaching me the life skills that I need to be successful in life. However, one of those classes that I will never forget is graphic design. My favorite project was the gross food label. It's basically where we had to get a box or a can and think of a gross food to put on that box. I chose pig intestines to put on a pasta box because I thought that would look really cool. And then I handed it in and I'm still waiting to see what it looks like, but I'm sure it turned out great. Other than that, I'm pretty excited about it and I can't wait to see it, so thank you. Uh, I, chose, I chose to take Photoshop because I uh, wanted a creative outlet and a fun class to take. I thought maybe I could uh, f uh, edit some photos of my friends and I. I um, like to do photography as well um, and I could definitely use it to edit some of those photos. I chose this class in the first place because I wanted to get early experience on how to work with Photoshop because I want to work with like digital design when I'm older to make labels for companies. I could 100% see myself uh, continuing design and production in the future and this class is a great start to learning the basics to how to design websites which uh, in the next few years and right now it's getting bigger due to businesses going online. There's a market for it and it's completely profitable so. Um, I think that there's a lot of like future in graphic design. I know people who do it and it's like really lucrative um, and it's also a good 
career you can do as an artist, like you can go to art school for that. So yeah, I think I could definitely see myself doing this in the future. Um, computer graphics has been around for a long time, obviously hand-drawn uh, originally. Now with computers, everything is computer-based. Um, and uh, it's used in media, uh, online, advertisements, product placement, um, even you know in theaters, TV, uh, movies. So it's not just uh, creating logos and designs, but it's creating everything that basically you see. Um, so it's going to be around for a long, long time. Graphic design is one of the many classes that help me grow as a person. I hope one day I can go into the video game industry to design video games for a company. For WVTV, I'm Edward Mulvey. This class teaches students how to put their creativity into graphic and digital form, and when each project is finished, it never fails to come to life and leave room for new creative ideas. Up next, this one-of-a-kind class is the definition of creativity. It gives the opportunity for students to pursue any skill they find interesting. The class leaves it all up to the students and their skills to demonstrate what they're capable of. So during my senior year, this class has allowed uh, students to do many different activities from learning to build a sword, creating an album, to even doing a dance routine. This class is Senior Project, which allows the wide variety of learning a new skill that basically can be anything you want. So I asked some of my classmates what project they would switch with with another one of their classmates. I would change mine with Aaron Eicher because drawing was like always something that I like to do other than beside making music and like the way she like executed her project and everything looked outstanding. So I would definitely say that is something that I would look into doing or switching with. So it would actually be my friend Elijah Jean he created this album which is really just unique and creative and it seems a lot more easier than what I'm doing, but I just really want to do his. I would probably choose, or I would probably change my project um, to creating a film, which is Aaron De La Modis, because I'm a big fan of cinematography and I think it's such a cool art form as well as just a way to express yourself and like what your vibe is. So. I really liked her art, and if I could change my project, which is welding, I would definitely choose creating a film. I think I would change mine to what Yershalem is doing. She's learning tap dance. I think that would be very fun. I always wanted to learn how to dance, but I never really got into it. Uh, I would definitely change mine with James McCullough because he is rebuilding a lawnmower, and I love building engines. I wouldn't. I would. I would. Ch I would say I'd change with Elijah because we're both doing music, but that's kind of a bailout. So I'd say I'd change it also to Aaron Delmodos, to you, into uh, I'd change, I'd do a short movie because since I was a kind of involved with the shooting of the movie and the, sorry, I get really excited, and uh, the music, since I was like really kind of involved with that, I've seen how it works and it was like really interesting and I was like, I feel like that would be really fun to do. It would be really tough to do because I saw how stressed you were. So I don't want to do that. But if I were to, without all the stress, I'd probably do that. I would actually change my project with Kieran Correo due to the fact that he is working with children and I think it gives them a great opportunity. And yeah. You know, Dela, that's a very difficult question for me because they're all fantastic, um, so it's really difficult. But I think if I were going to switch with anybody, I would want to learn how to forge a sword. So I'm going to go with Nick C. As you heard from many of my classmates, they have very similar and different opinions of what project they would choose. I created a short film called Beyond Us, and I'm very proud of the work I did. If you're interested in taking senior project, it is a great class to take if you have a skill you really are interested in honing in or learning a new skill that can basically become a future career of yours. From WVTV, this is Aaron Delamoda signing off. Senior Project is a great class to take if you want to spend a school year learning a new skill or taking something you have interest in already and expanding it to something great and beneficial. You never know what can happen. Your experience of participating in Senior Project may just inspire others to go for it as well. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today for the last edition of Wildcat News for the 2021 to 2022 school year. I'm your host, Brooke Holzhauer, hoping to see you next time.
each other's stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! 